sleek, sophisticated, confounding enemy radar with lethal precision and speed. You create such an element of surprise. You can now basically roam at will and attack the targets that you want to. You just don't have the time to respond. An eerie, bat-like wing instantly recognizable as the shape of a dreaded stealth bomber. If you could keep them from seeing you. But this is not a modern invention. It's amazing that of the technology that existed during the time frame that they could come up with this type of a vehicle. Almost half a century before the B-2 stealth bomber, This is the staggering Nazi innovation that almost changed the course of history. The combination of speed and stealth was absolutely lethal. An ingenious innovation, terrifyingly ahead of its time. Final months of the Second World War, Allied forces sped across Germany in a desperate search. Intelligence reports hinted at a secret Nazi weapon that could change the outcome of the war. On the 14th of April, 1945, troops from America's Third Army discovered a top secret German base hidden in a forest 160 kilometers northeast of Frankfurt. Inside, they uncovered an aircraft the likes of which they'd never seen before. A wooden jet fighter, the Horton 229. The soldiers must have been stunned when those doors opened up and for the first time they see this aircraft with its unearthly shape, something that no one had ever seen before, a jet engine powered wooden aircraft, it would have been impossible for them to clearly understand the magnitude or even the importance of what they had discovered. At the end of the war, the Horton 229 and other advanced Nazi aircraft were quickly shipped back to America under Operation Seahorse. The Batwing fighter was reassembled, but its flying and stealth capabilities were never tested. For the last six decades, the only surviving Horton 229 has been locked away from prying eyes. Generations ahead of its time, the coveted Nazi war prize remains under tight security inside a government warehouse outside Washington, D.C. But was it really the world's first stealth attack aircraft? More than 60 years after it took to the skies, this innovative design is about to be put to an extraordinary test. Wow. It's amazing that the uh, Germans were that far along in World War II. It's amazing that of the technology that existed during the time frame, that they could come up with this type of a vehicle. Stealth designer Tom Dobrins will lead a team of aerospace engineers from Northrop Grumman, the company that helped build America's modern stealth bomber, to make a full-scale replica of the Horton 229. The Nazi jet model will then be tested against Second World War era radar. After the Battle of Britain, Goring come out and says, we need to find new flying machines. What we got now is ineffective. It wasn't ineffective. You know, they had some, some good flying machines. It was the radar that destroyed them. Most of what's known about the 229 comes from aviation historian and writer David Myra, who interviewed its designers, Walter and Reimar Horton, before they died in the 1990s. Okay, Aldo, uh, diameter of the exhaust liner. 
The aerospace engineers have been allowed access to the only surviving 229 to take measurements. Incredibly, the jet was made almost entirely of wood. If the veneered layers were designed to stop radar penetration, it means that the Nazis were pioneering stealth technology way back in 1944. Was it truly something that they were trying to defeat a radar system? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be something we're going to try to find out. They open the investigation with a test on the original plywood skin. This will help us determine whether energy was being, is being absorbed or reflected or maybe shielding the inside of the vehicle itself from, uh, from energy. A pair of radar-emitting probes focus electromagnetic energy against the plywood to see if it absorbs radar. Uh, it seems like uh, the surface itself isn't conductive, but uh, it may be absorbing the uh, signal. So there's, there's a good possibility that this could have been built as of anything, maybe not even absorbing, but just possibly shielding. The test confirms the 229's plywood skin would have reduced its long-range visibility on radar. And it's not the only advanced stealth design feature. It's got buried engines in the, in the fuselage. All the surfaces are blended. Um, you've got the carbon in the skin. You've got all these things. And then to say, you know, were they thinking about radar? Well, everything points to that. This is the modern shape of stealth, the American B-2 bomber. This expansive flying wing embodies both engineering elegance and all aspects of stealth. Although it spans almost 52 meters, its radar cross-section, the amount of electromagnetic energy it reflects back to a radar detector, is smaller than that of an eagle. To reduce its reflective signature, stealth aircraft like the B-2 rely on two critical factors. Energy absorbing materials and low profile shapes that prevent radar signals bouncing back to the receiver. Stealth technology doesn't make an aircraft invisible, but what it can do is dramatically reduce the detection range, making it much more difficult to defend against using fighters and anti-aircraft weapons. Modern stealth aircraft began to be developed in the 1970s in high-security, top-secret American factories. Oh, a lot of the things that we've been doing over the years, you know, is kept in a cloak of secrecy. Most of the time, the things I work at Northrop are programs that I'm not allowed to talk about. Much of that classified work continues at Northrop Grumman's Advanced Design and Manufacturing Facility in Los Angeles. And it's here, amid the cutting-edge 21st century technology, that a full-scale copy of Nazi Germany's most advanced aircraft will be resurrected over the next three months. The full-scale replica will be built around a central body flanked by a pair of outer wing panels. Uh, right now we're building the rotator and... The model shop team begins assembling the sensor body from blueprints reproduced from the Horton Brothers' original drawings. Okay, let's stick it together. They're using nails and glue, the same materials that held the original German prototype together. Both the shape and the materials used will have to be as similar to the original as possible. Most of it is wood, and there's a few parts that are going to be made out of fiberglass. But the only metal parts are the, uh, the uh, rotator and the lifting points. The model builders have spent their careers working on Northrop's most advanced stealth programs. And they're not all the same. They'll assemble the Horton 229 around a metal rotator that's been used to mount modern stealth machines on the radar testing range. These models are usually highly classified. For once, the stealth modelers are free to talk about the German design they're building around a rotator. This rotator box was used on a different program, uh, another classified program. I really can't tell you what it is, but it's seen its fair share of action. When complete, the 
rotator will be used to attach the model to a pole, five stories above the ground. Radar signals will be directed at the model to determine its stealth effectiveness. In Nazi Germany, stealthy, radar-evading aircraft were exactly what the Luftwaffe needed, after disastrous losses in one of the most pivotal battles of the entire war. In the summer of 1940, Hitler launched an unprecedented aerial attack to preempt the invasion of Britain. Nazi air supremo Hermann Goering was confident that the vastly outnumbered RAF would be brought to its knees. But the British defenders saw them coming. What gave the British the defensive edge they needed was radar. This was a new technology that provided accurate range, altitude, and the numbers of German aircraft as they approached across the English Channel. Britain's chain home radar station network proved critical in directing the RAF pilots who cut down the German raiders. That was the one technology that completely alleviated the advantage the Germans had with their overwhelming number of aircraft. The Battle of Britain proved to be the pivotal point in the air war and radar was the key. To regain supremacy of the skies, the Nazi high command fantasized about new kinds of fighter bombers built with new German technology. Officially, the concept was known as a 3 by 1000 that is, a fighter that could fly 1,000 kilometers an hour over a 1,000 kilometer distance and deliver a 1,000 kilogram bomb on target. It was pushing the limit of any known aviation technology of the day. Brothers, Reimar and Walter Horton, had graduated from the Hitler Youth to the Luftwaffe. They were consumed with the idea of creating an aircraft that flew with the elegant efficiency of birds. In the early 1930s, the self-taught designers began building and piloting a series of tailless wooden gliders. They modified their wing around what was then a new innovation, the jet engine. It was a concept that just might have delivered the ultimate attack aircraft their Führer and his henchmen were dreaming of. Walter and Reimer's brother Wolfram was, was killed in the Battle of Britain as Wolfram was laying mines along the French coast in a Heinkel 111. Walter was still burned with revenge for losing all his friends in the Battle of Britain, so he wanted to go back to England to attack the British chain home radar network. The Horton 229 was the brainchild of Walter and it was generations ahead of any other aircraft developed in the world. Of all the proposals reviewed by Hermann Goring for his new fighter, only one aircraft met his requirements. It was the radical design submitted by two brothers he'd never heard of. The flying wing was a radical concept to everyone, including Goring. And the idea that it was made out of wood just added to his skepticism. Walter's so consumed with the passion for this plane that he sort of pulls Goring into the whole idea saying we can do it we can build this from wood with jet engines we can make it fly a thousand kilometers an hour we can give it a thousand kilometer range we can deliver the payloads you need and Goring just said I I'm just astounded by this machine and the shape he says no tail no elevator Walter said it's going to be so maneuverable against allied fighters allied bombers it's going to sweep the skies clean for you so Goring is so taken by Walter's vision that he buys in completely to a flying wing. Goring said, go do this, build it for me and make it fly. The Hortons left the meeting with Goring knowing that they had won the contract to build a three times 1,000 flying machine. And now they felt that they had been vindicated. Fortunately for the free world, time would run out for the loyal Nazi designers. More than half a century later, Another Horton 229 model is being put together for the ultimate radar test. This is going to be a big model, over 50 feet wingspan, and we're going to need a lot of wood to build this model. 